Theories about what will happen in the year 2012 are a lot like snowflakes. No two are alike. I've found while doing the research for this presentation that there is in fact a reason that there is so much disagreement among researchers about what is supposed to happen in the year 2012. Let's start with a very common claim that on December 21st, 2012, there will be some kind of alignment with the center of our galaxy. There are two main versions to this part of the theory. One camp says that the alignment will be when the sun rises above the horizon on December 21st, 2012, the winter solstice, that the sun will rise in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, thus causing an alignment with the Earth, Sun, and the galactic center. And it does, in fact, seem to do this, more or less. You can verify this with an astronomy program. There are, however, at least two problems with this. This event is only significant from the Earth's point of view. The precession cycle, or the roughly 26,000 year wobble of the Earth, only causes the effect of the star's changing position on the horizon, and therefore only the effect of a galactic alignment. If you were viewing this from anywhere else in the solar system, it would be totally insignificant. This is only a visual effect, and only from the Earth's perspective and no gravitational force or radiation can be expected from this event because other than the tilt of the Earth, nothing will be any different than the last few thousand solstices. We will be no closer to galactic center on that day than on any other day. And in fact, we'll be further away from galactic center than we were even when the Mayans made this prediction, which we'll look into here in just a second. But if the Mayans did in fact point to this event with their calendar, which we will also look into later, it should be noted how totally harmless and insignificant the event is other than if Earth-based people gave significance to it, either for timekeeping or for religious reasons. But to be sure, it is not going to cause a pole shift or any other cataclysm. It can't. It's only an illusion, more or less. The other problem with this is that because precession is so slow, there is almost no difference between, say, this year, 2008, on December 21st, and December 21st in 2012. The Sun will also rise in galactic center this year on the solstice as well. In fact, here is a quote from John Major Jenkins, one of the major proponents of the 2012 theories, from a part of his website called Response to Counterarguments. He says, in the interest of clarity, I will mention that it would be more accurate to say that the alignment occurs in the era of A.D. 2012 because precession is such a slow phenomena. Fifty years on either side of 2012 might be appropriate. The other camp of the 2012 alignment issue is probably the more significant one because it's dealing with the solar system's actual location in relation to galactic center. The idea is that our little solar system is moving around the center of the galaxy every 225 to 250 million years or so. And while doing this, it's also moving up and down in a cycle crossing the middle of the plane every 33 million years. So the question is, are we going to cross that galactic plane in 2012? Not even close. According to the journal Nature and others, there is evidence of crossing this plane 3 million years ago. This would mean that we are moving away from the galactic plane and won't be due to cross for another 30 million years. Not to mention that the margin of error in these calculations is at least 2.1 parsecs, or about 6.5 light years, making images like these completely meaningless. Moving on to the idea of a pole shift. Although many theorists disagree on whether this pole shift will be magnetic or a physical shifting of the crust of the Earth, the reason for this happening in or around 2012 is usually cited as one of the following reasons. Planetary alignment, Planet X or Nibiru and its comet's tail, a tremendous sun flare, or an asteroid. The first one is easy enough. There is no planetary alignment on December 21st, 2012. This is what the planets will look like on that date. There is a link on the screen to an online program that you can check this out for yourself, too. Let's take a look at some of the Planet X theories. The idea of Nibiru, or Planet X, is traced back to Zachariah Sitchin and his translations of the Sumerian texts, and specifically to his interpretation of VA243 cylinder seal, 
which he says shows that the Sumerians knew of twelve planets, minus the sun and the moon, which they considered planets, and this would mean that there is another planet. His interpretation of the seal is wrong. The Sumerians have an unambiguous symbol for the sun, a circle with four triangles around it, like rays, and squiggly lines between the triangles. That is emphatically not the symbol in the seal. The symbol used in the seal is that of a bright star. This symbol for stars is very commonly used, and this is the symbol that we have in the seal. So even Sitchin's basic premise is wrong. For details on this and on what the seal actually means, see Dr. Michael Heiser's paper, "The Myth of the Twelfth Planet: A Brief Analysis of Cylinder Seal VA243," available at his website sitchinwrong.com. Sitchin claims that the picture shows Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto too, but the Sumerians didn't have telescopes and therefore could only have known about those planets if aliens told them about their existence. But if aliens told them about those planets, why not about the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, or Saturn's rings? The seal doesn't show any of these features, and the Sumerians thought that the moon and the sun were planets, which they aren't. Certainly, aliens would know that the sun and moon are not planets. Sitchin is picking and choosing things in the picture to support his arguments, and ignoring things that don't support it, like the inscription on the seal itself, which has nothing to do with his theory. This isn't science; it's fantasy. It's also wrong. If Sitchin does know about an incoming planet, he didn't get it from his translations. Another argument against Planet X is the absence of any evidence for it. For Planet X to be here in less than a decade, it can't be farther than a billion or so kilometers away. Even at that distance, it would be one of the brightest objects in the sky. Remember, tiny Pluto is five billion kilometers out and can easily be detected using modern equipment. And Pluto is way smaller than Planet X is supposed to be. Some claim it's because it's hiding behind the sun, and that's why we don't detect it. If it was behind the sun, it would be moving at its fastest point, considering its projected orbit, and it would only be behind the sun for a very short time. There are a lot of claims about Planet X out there, like the observatory is being closed down to keep the information from the public, which is not true at all. Besides the fact that they would need to confiscate every telescope in the world to keep this secret hidden, there's also been postings of pictures and other so-called evidence of Planet X, all of which have been shown to either be an admitted hoax or a mistake of some kind. There are actual pole shifts that do occur, both magnetic pole shifts and physical pole shifts, and we are in the middle of a long process of a magnetic pole shift. The biggest effect of which is that we will have to relabel our compasses in a few hundred years. The following is an excerpt from an article from NASA. Reversals take a few thousand years to complete, and during the time, contrary to popular belief, the magnetic field does not vanish. It just gets more complicated, says Glatzmayer. Magnetic lines of force near Earth's surface become twisted and tangled, and magnetic poles pop up in unaccustomed places. A south magnetic pole might emerge over Africa, for instance. Or a North Pole over Tahiti, weird, but it's still a planetary magnetic field, and it still protects us from space radiation and solar storms. I might suggest that it's ridiculous to pinpoint a specific date, such as December 21, 2012, for this happening, not just because it's such a slow process, but because the proposed reason, such as a galactic alignment, isn't even true, thus making it a non-issue. The other kind of pole shift is a physical pole shift. Let's first set the record straight that this would require an event of tremendous energy, and that it is not part of any cycle or natural occurrence, and no increasing of solar energy would be enough to cause this. We have actually had a few degree shift of the poles in the past, but not a reversal by any means. It's what's called a true polar wanderer. William Sager, in an article entitled. Texas A&M oceanographer challenges plate tectonics as a reason for the pole shift. Says our data set indicates that this polar shift took place at a rate between five and ten degrees per million years. He said essentially it happens within the blink of an eye in terms of geological time. So what this means is that scientists who call this event fast call fast five to ten million years, and that predicting a specific date for this to happen is again ridiculous. Especially considering that we are told that the Mayans predicted it using the understanding of precession, 
which couldn't have any less significance to this event, no matter how well that they understood it. So let's take a look at what supposedly got this whole thing started, the Mayan calendar. The first question is, did the Mayan long count calendar predict the end of the world? No. There is no reference to this concept in Mayan culture. These ideas about the Mayan calendar are imposed by us, and not by the Mayans. Again, quoting John Major Jenkins, he says, I do not concur with the Neo-Atlantean pole shift cataclysmologists on the idea that the world will literally end in 2012. With this distinction in mind, I admit that I still occasionally write as a shorthand note, end date, or end date in 2012. This does not mean that I believe the Mayan calendar or the world will end in AD 2012. Often when you listen or read or watch a presentation on 2012, they will make the jump from the resetting of the calendar to it must mean that the major cataclysms are coming in a very slick way, usually not dwelling on this important transition. Those that do mention it usually cite one of the following reasons to tie it together. Number one, that a Mayan ball game was actually symbolism that told us about galactic alignment. And number two, that certain pictorials of the sacred tree also speak of galactic alignment. While I don't agree with the logic used to make these connections and think that they are far-fetched and in some cases frivolous, for the sake of argument, I will say that the Mayans did for whatever reason choose to end their calendar on this 2012 solstice because of the visual effect of the sun rising in galactic center on that date and that they fully knew of this effect. But even then, this would only be of local, religious, or mathematical significance. That is to say, if the Mayans believed it was a symbol of rebirth when the sun appeared in the Milky Way galaxy, it would be their prerogative. But it wouldn't have any galactic importance. There is also this idea that the Mayans were able to miraculously determine these events, but it should be noted that Western society discovered the procession of the equinoxes at least 100 years before the first Mayan calendar was ever made, so it wasn't exactly a new concept. The calculations to determine these events are not magical, but a matter of mathematics and astronomical observations. The Mayan culture stayed stable for centuries, so it's entirely possible for an astronomer to plot the position of some stars at midnight at the equinox, and his grandson to plot the same stars 72 years later, and realize that the stars had all shifted one degree in that time. Multiply by 360, and you get the precession cycle of 26,000 years. Almost certainly this is how they did it, because that's all it takes. So, were the Mayans predicting the end of the world? Definitely not. In fact, the entire reason, as far as I can tell, for this hype is that the Mayans restart their calendar, much like we do on December 31st. But they did it on a solstice, which they had the mathematical skill to do fairly easily. We are the ones responsible for this 2012 fever. We have put a lot of words in the Mayans' mouths. We have thrown pole shifts and Planet X and solar flares and everything else into the mix, all of which have no connection and not only weren't suggested by the Mayans, but it would be impossible to predict any of those things using any of the methods we are told that they use to make such predictions. Not to mention that we have been told untruths about things like our solar system aligning with galactic center, which it did three million years ago, and we won't be returning for another 30 million years. I think there could be many reasons why this idea is so actively being promoted to the world. I encourage you to draw your own conclusions. However, while doing the research on this, I finally found out why I think it's being done. The following is my personal view, and it may be extreme, and if you don't agree with it, I encourage you not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, because the 2012 theories are still wrong, no matter what. If you don't want to hear my analysis, feel free to shut off the video at this point. Many 2012 researchers are quick to point out how things will be getting much worse upon the approach to 2012, and we will see many cataclysms and earth changes on the way to our promised enlightenment. I think that this has to be promoted as much as possible to people so that when they see these kinds of things happening in the next few years, which I agree will happen, but for different reasons, everyone will try to endure these things thinking it's a natural cycle, never realizing the obvious fact which is that the Bible 
clearly prophesied what the days before the return of Jesus and the so-called birth pangs would look like, and even why they were happening, and what to do about it. This 2012 thing is both the proverbial carrot on the string, which keeps us looking for our illumination, while simultaneously gives us the pride that we know that all these terrible things are a result of science. Thus, there is no reason to pay attention to any of that. I hear a lot of criticisms of the Bible. I'm not too impressed with most of them. But surprisingly, the one that could really have an impact is never used even by the fiercest critics, which is challenging the fact that the Bible has never missed in regards to prophecy. That is, that it is 100% accurate, and the Bible itself is full of prophecies. Almost 25% of the Bible is prophecy at the time that it was written. And because of the Septuagint, it can be demonstrated easily that it was written before the events it prophesied happened. And these aren't vague Nostradamus type prophecies either. They are talking about specific kingdoms and people and places and wars and times and even names, all of which came 100% true. And I think sometimes we don't remember that for about 1200 of the past 2000 years, it was completely illegal to own a Bible. It was punishable by death. So I think sometimes we take for granted this book and considering its track record, it should be the most important book on our bookshelf. Thank you for your time.